American astronaut Donald Williams said, for those who have seen the Earth from space, and for the hundreds and perhaps thousands more who will, the experience most certainly changes your perspective. The things that we share in our world are far more valuable than those which divide us. Back in 2009, I worked at Canada's largest space company, and my colleague George Tice and I were summoned to Moscow to go meet with Energia, a very famous aerospace giant, a uh, long-standing Russian company. And the Russians were proposing a partnership with us to put some kind of Earth-observing payload on the ISS as a joint venture. So we went into this meeting, and we were starting to brainstorm how we could work this, and all of a sudden, a completely random, unconnected thought popped into my mind, and I thought of the Eagle Camp. On Hornby Island, just off the coast of Vancouver, a few years back, a guy put a very good quality webcam on an eagle's nest, very close up, and he streamed it live onto the internet 24 hours a day. And viewership went vertical. Millions of people looked at this. So I said to the Russians, why don't we do the same thing for space? Long story short, we've spun out a new company. It's a startup. It's called Earthcast. We've raised millions of dollars to pursue a unique idea. What if we democratize for all in the world to see the real-time, near-real-time viewership of the planet from space? And so, a little bit of background. Uh, the International Space Station, uh, this is the platform. It's a very unusual platform for this type of application. For one thing, it's low. It's at 350 kilometers. It's very expensive. It's the most expensive engin engineering project in history. They spent about $100 billion on it. It's multilateral. Uh, the, the taxpayers, the long-suffering taxpayers of the United States, Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada are partners in this project. Our contribution is the Canada Arm, the Canada Arm II, and the, the sort of the hand, the SPDM that sits on that. It moves along the, the trust structure there. Our little project, uh, by comparison, uh, is also multilateral. So the Russians are providing the real estate, the launch, the downlink, the power, uh, some ground station access. Here in Canada, we've raised the capital for this project, and we're responsible for executing on the business plan. Uh, the British uh, are building the front end of the telescopes. It's at Rutherford Appleton Labs, uh, just south of Oxford. But the back end is being built in Brampton here by MDA, just up the road. And uh, that will come together in the next uh, few months. And then the website, a truly beautiful thing, is being put together uh, by a team that we've assembled in San Francisco. Um, the orbit of the ISS is very unusual for this application. So uh, space, you know, as you picture, most Earth observations go in a polar orbit, but the ISS cuts through at a 52-degree inclination, such that it, as it orbits the Earth 16 times a day, it travels between 52 north and 52 south. And it's moving at a pretty good clip, 26,000 kilometers an hour. So our two cameras will be right where you see them on the, in the foreground, on the, the right side of the Russian service module Zvezda. And this is the CAD grinds of the cameras. We have a medium resolution camera, it's on the inside. It's nadir pointing, that means it looks down all the time. And it will collect a 50 kilometer swath in color, not, image, not video, just imagery, at five and a half meter resolution. And it's basically always on. We're just scooping up ribbons of imagery as this thing travels around the planet. And the second camera though, this is utterly unique. This is an HD 1.1 meter true video, three frames a second camera, and it sits on this very accurate pointable platform that the Russians have made available to us. And so we, as we fly along, we can hold a target for about 90 seconds as we fly by and then flip to another target. And we will collect about 150 of those HD videos every single day. So the cameras are in an advanced state of development. Uh, the last bit of engineering and hardware will leave uh, Canada in the next several weeks and will go to England. Uh, the, the, the final integration and testing of those cameras, rigorous testing, will be done uh, at RAL, and then they will be shipped to Moscow uh, by midsummer. The Russians will package them up for launch, ship them to Baikonur, Kazakhstan, and they will launch on October 16th. Um, they will be serviced, uh, the, the launch in the, the Progress supply ship. Uh, you see it here, it's just coming into dock to the ISS, unloaded, and then the cosmonauts, in the course of three separate spacewalks, uh, late October, early November, will install these cameras on the outside of the ISS. There's a period of commissioning and calibration and so forth, and we will begin full operations of these cameras in early 2014. So why are we doing this? Astronauts speak of something called the overview effect, and that is the profound sense of awe and mystery 
and, and uh, uh, just uh, wonder of seeing the earth, the magnificence of our home, from the perspective, from the vantage point of space. And one of our goals uh, is, in a small way, to give a taste of that experience to anyone in the world who has an internet connection. And so, um, we will be collecting imagery like this, in addition to the two cameras that we have on the outside, and those are only the first two, we've got many more planned. We will have cameras inside the ISS that look out through the window. This is imagery collected by Don Pettit, a NASA astronaut. Uh, this is single frame imagery that he has compiled into this kind of montage. And you see the spectacular beauty of Earth. You see lightning strikes. You see the lights of our cities shining through. Uh, we're coming down right now off the coast of Chile. Uh, and you see the sun rising coming up through the, 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 uh, the horizon. It gets better, trust me. This is Florida coming down over the Caribbean. Multiple streams of these cameras providing this imagery and a sense of the immediacy available for anyone in the world to see. We want to democratize that view. This is my favorite. You're coming down to see the boot of Italy. You see Greece, Turkey. Look for the Nile at the top right and the coast of Israel and Palestine. And finally, for a Canadian audience, the Aurora Borealis, <laughs> the Canadarm. I hope you appreciate the cynical use of this emotional imagery to manipulate my audience. <laughs> <clears throat> What was most significant about the lunar voyage was not that man set foot on the moon, but that they set eye on the earth. Norman Cousins' incredibly apt observation in 1979. So our view is that having this kind of immediate, near real-time imagery from space would be incredibly powerful for some of the recent major news events that have taken place. Think of Hurricane Sandy. Think of Katrina. Think of Fukushima. Think of Tahrir Square, if you had had HD video of that event for everyone in the world to see. I love this quote from our own Chris Hatfield, his recent press conference. He said, if a visitor comes aboard the station, the first thing I would do would take them to a big window so that he can truly see our Earth, to understand the magnificence of it, the inevitable power of it, the size of it, the rolling beauty of it, but also the inherent fragility. This is a marvelous, marvelous human experience. The only thing that gets me mad is that I have to sleep. <laughs> uh, you know, our objective here is not simply to collect more beautiful footage or video uh, takes uh, of the Earth from space, because clearly a lot of that exists. Uh, what we want to do is put multiple cameras on the ISS of different resolutions, looking at different things all the time, and to stream the, the vast amount of that to, to the Internet for everyone to see, to democratize that view. And I think the result will be um, a, a, a huge meta-visual narrative of our, of our Earth, of change, of places, of events, and to put that in, in everybody's hands so that we can all get a taste of the immediacy, the emotional connection, and the sense of awe that up until now has only been reserved for very few. Thank you. <laughs>